say this, you don't have to make a podcast. It could be a blog, it could be a YouTube series, it could be a one-off videos every time you do have an idea, every time you do find your voice. You don't need to start a podcast just because it's a buzzy word and you feel like you need to start a podcast. You might not see growth right away and you sort of just need to be okay with that. Making your calls to action on the show really clear that you want to hear from your audience, really, really important. And also early on, creating a culture of collaboration between your show and other shows in your general topic area is a really big way to reach new audiences. Hi, this is Shubham Tiwari. I'm the community manager of the Thousand Faces Club. And today we are here with one of the pioneers of podcasting industries or somebody who's at trying to add some more colors to it, who started her recommendation newsletter called Earbuds Podcast Collective in 2017. Since then, she has managed podcast studios, worked as an app in-app curator, produced several podcasts and has organized podcast communities on Twitter, Discord, Slack, and much more. Today, we are going to pick her brains on all things podcast. So let's welcome Ariel to the Fireside Chats. Yay, Ariel, thank welcome. you for having me. <laughs> so grateful to have you. So let's begin uh, with some uh, something that I struggle with, that is through discovering new podcasts. We all have, you know, our favorite podcasters, like the biggest ones of them, like Joe Rogan, Chris Williamson, others like that. But when it comes to, uh, you know, discovering something new, how do you choose a new podcast? Is it about the thumbnail art? Is it about a subject that you're looking, you know, you're finding something about or a person? How do you approach this? Yeah, I love this question, but I just want to clarify that when you say we all have our favorite podcast to listen to, Joe Rogan is not on that list for me. <laughs> I meant popular, popular I understand, podcasters. Yeah. I understand, but I cannot have my name associated with him being a favorite podcast. So here I am to share some other amazing podcast recommendations. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. How do I discover? I I think it's a it's a compounding sort of effect for me. So I see a podcast on a newsletter. I then see a podcast in a podcast listening app. I then see a podcast posting on Twitter. And then I think to myself, you know what? I've seen this everywhere. I'm going to go check it out. So I think it depends. I think like when a big studio releases a new show and I get a press release for it, um, depending on who's involved in that new show, depending on what the press release looks and sounds like, depending on if they're also posting on social, I might check out that show. Um, but a lot of the time, what's going to cause me to press play on something is if the subject matter, um, if the cover art looks great, that, you know, that's your first impression. That's the first thing that you look at. If the title of the show then matches the cover art and you think, okay, these two things together are really doing it for me. And then you read the description and then you think, okay, yep, everything is matching up. I'm going to go check this out. Then you hit play. And then on the first few seconds, you're intrigued, you're hooked, then you stick around, right? But what actually gets you to hit play? I, I do think, um, unfortunately, we, unfortunately or fortunately, we, we judge books by their cover. And I think um, yeah. we judge podcast cover art by their, by their cover arts, by their, we, we judge podcasts by their tiles, by their cover art. So I don't think it's wrong that a lot of people do do that. I, I don't think a lot of people have the foresight to say, you know what, I'm going to look beyond the cover art. I think that they look at the cover art. So for me, I definitely look at the cover art. Um, and I'm not, I'm not not listening to something just because the cover art is ugly or poorly designed, but I am definitely more likely to check it out if the cover art is beautiful. But I, I will go back and say that I think it's the compounding interest. I think it's the compounding factors that if I see it here, 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 and here, I am probably going to check it out, which is why marketing is so important. Right, right, right. Wonderful. So uh, some basic questions to begin with. What are the elements of a great podcast? I'm sure this question comes across, you know, many times to you, but yeah. 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 So many elements make up a great podcast. It also depends on what the creator wants out of the show. It depends on what the listeners want out of the show. I'll say that the most important thing to do when you're thinking about what you want your podcast to be about is what is your goal for the show? It could be that you want a chance to chat with people around the world on your subject matter, and that could make a really great podcast for you, and that could make a really great podcast for your listeners, even if you don't have the highest sound quality, even if you don't have the most pointed episodes that are, you know, they're not totally segment to segment to segment, and they're not the most cleaned up, buttoned up things in the world. 
But if you are accomplishing your goals, then that could be a great podcast. There are, there are many things that make up a great podcast. Um, I, I would say I can answer this for myself. What makes, a, what makes up a great podcast for me when I'm listening is um, if I get out of the show, what I am promised out of the show. I think it's a give and take with the listener to the creator. Are they telling me um, that I'm going to get one thing and then I'm getting another thing and that I feel like I've wasted 43 minutes of my life? That's not a great podcast episode, right? <laughs> but if I know what I'm getting, we're entering into a contract when I hit play on your episode. You're, you're promising me one thing. I hope to receive that one thing. That makes a great show for me. It doesn't necessarily matter if the audio quality is not perfect. It doesn't necessarily matter if um, the interview was not the most professional interview ever, but maybe I got something out of it. As long as I got what I was promised, I feel like that was a good usage of my time. Therefore, I might recommend that show. Right. And how should you, uh, you know, how should one choose the uh, guests for their podcast? What are your goals? You know, so it could be that you want to chat with people who you want to speak with. Um, and, and this is your podcast is an opportunity to have conversations with people for a networking purpose. Or it could be that you've asked your listeners. Maybe you have a big enough audience that you can say to them, who do you want to hear me in conversation with? And then you can go after guests based on that idea. But I think that it is important to define that for yourself, to define for yourself what you want out of your own show, and then to balance that really well with what your listeners want out of your show, if you can, if you actually are hearing from them. Cool. Uh, and you're also building communities on, like, just as I said in the introduction, like Slack, Discord, you are on multiple platforms. So how are you building your community of podcasters? Please tell us more about it. Yeah. Um, when I started in the podcast space in 2017, I was informally building community by way of my newsletter. I had a Facebook group. I have a Twitter for my newsletter. Um, but, you know, I, I wasn't grouping these people in any one place. I was hoping that my Facebook group would take off at one point and people would go in there to discuss podcasts and talk about the podcast community, but it didn't take off the way I'd hoped. And then I did in-person events for a while. Um, and those were great. I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I would have networking events or storytelling events and that was building community, but those were sort of in one place at one time. They didn't really extend beyond that one place at one time. They were one-off events. Maybe I would do one every six months. And then when the pandemic hit, I started experimenting with um, with virtual trivia on CastBox. So at the time, CastBox is a podcast listening app. They were really prioritizing the concept of live casts. It was essentially Clubhouse before Clubhouse, where you could log on and go live and people could join your session and they could raise their hand and come up on the stage. Really, really, it was Clubhouse before Clubhouse. And... I was doing trivia for my friends and anybody who wanted to join on CastBox, and we, we had a prize for trivia, and people loved these trivias, and we gave away hundreds of dollars. It was really, really fun, and that was my, my first virtual attempt at building community right at the, the beginning of the lockdown in the U.S., March to May, March to June maybe of 2020, and it was my first taste of, wow, okay, I can really bring people together and have them accomplish a goal or at least be entertained for a little bit. And that's when I was working at CastBox. A little bit later, I started working at Squadcast, which is a remote recording platform. And that's when I was officially building community. My job was to build community at Squadcast. And that meant, you know, there are however many tens of thousands of customers. And our goal, my goal was to figure out how to how to learn what they loved about the product and then take what they loved about the product to make the product better and to make their experience better. And we did that on Slack. We did that on Facebook. We do that with events. We do that in real life. Uh, we do that with events online. Then we do that with uh, events in real life and really anything you can think of. And um, I've employed some tactics to make this happen. Like um, uh, the, the biggest part of it is really asking the community what they want and if they actually have time to be a part of this community. I think a lot of people fall under the trap of, I have to start a community for my podcast or I have to start a community for my business. And truthfully, there are way too many businesses for each person to be part of every community that every business has. So you need to figure out what to what extent your community wants to be part of your community. Um, so that's th th those are some of the principles that underlie how I build community. And then I also have a pretty active personal Twitter account 
that I share podcast tips on. I think that's how we found each other. Um, yep. And when I do that, a lot of people seem to enjoy that. And I, I wouldn't say it's an official community. I'm not building a community of Ariel people, <laughs> people that follow <laughs> Ariel. But um, I do have a Twitter community. Twitter released uh, the concept of communities, I want to say a year and a half ago. So we have a community called Podcasting Twitter with over a thousand people in it. So people can post in there and ask questions about um, podcast world and podcast listening and really anything related. And um, that's a great place to hang out. And then when Twitter was potentially going to be dying a few months ago, I was like, you know what, let's have a let's have an exit plan. <laughs> so I started yeah. a discord and that discord has a lot of people in it and a lot of people very actively asking questions, sharing recommendations, sharing their podcasts. And that's another really great place to hang out. And I think um, for me, it all comes back to meet the people where they are. Some people mm -hmm. don't want to be on Twitter. Some people don't want to be on Facebook. Some people don't want to be on Discord. So with the Discord, yep. we also now have a newsletter that goes out every week so that if you don't feel like checking the Discord, you can still find out what happened on the Discord. So I think I'm just experimenting. I have my irons in many different fires to figure out which mm -hmm. is going to take off. And it could be that they all take off and I must do this all forever. And that's okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Amazing. We wish you all the best. Uh, what advice would you give to you know the podcasters who are you know not able to find their voice yet because you have mentioned this multiple times like it depends on you know what kind of guests you want to bring in it depends on your you know what you want to do with it but a lot of people don't know exactly what they want to do with their podcast yeah. right so how i mean second part of the question is how do you grow a loyal, loyal audience but before that uh what do you do if you're not able to find your voice well why do you want to have a podcast in the first place you know I don't know. People have, you know, in the, in the age of social media, they have so many ideas in their head. Well, they I'll can't. just say this. You don't have to make yeah. a podcast. You know, mm -hmm. it could be a blog. <laughs> it could be a blog. It could be a, a YouTube series. It could be uh, a one-off videos. Every time you do have an idea, every time you do find your voice, you don't need to start a podcast just because it's a buzzy word and you feel like you need to start a podcast. You also don't need to start a podcast just because somebody said one time that you were funny and should start a podcast. That doesn't mean you yes. have to start a podcast. I think people forget that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think if you haven't found your voice right now, yes, you can listen to other podcasts and try to get inspiration. Yes, you can read newsletters about podcasting and try to get inspiration from them. But also if it's not coming to you naturally, think about shorter form content. Think about how maybe you have an idea for like I said before, a one-off series, maybe you, maybe you, maybe your expertise is in mindfulness and you don't right. need an episode every single week, but maybe you can have an episode every single month. You know, there's podcasts can look differently for different people. Totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that you don't need to necessarily become a podcaster to have, you know, your voice heard. Right. Yeah. But this is such a new medium. I mean, I'm speaking, you know, for the rest of the world, because whatever starts in America, you know, the world, quickly catches up to it right so a lot of people still don't exactly know what podcast is and you know very basic questions uh, let's say um, philosophical questions why do we listen to podcasts what do you think yeah I I, I love this <laughs> and it's something that I'm trying to answer because I want more people to listen to podcasts I listen to podcasts personally because I love being able to move around while I'm consuming content I think that I learn better while I am walking or washing the dishes or cleaning or I go out of my way to go for a walk so that I can listen more. Um, but then I also listen to podcasts because I work in the podcast space and want to know what's going on in the podcast space. But I did start out listening for the sake of listening only. Like I, I Before I worked in the podcast space, I loved, loved, loved occupying my ears with stories with news, with entertainment, with comedy, all the time. I was doing it all the time. And um, I was doing it because I I was obsessed with this. It wasn't new technology. It, I, this was 2016, 2014 to 2016. It was when I really started listening. It was still 10 years old, 15 years old at that time. But it was new to me. And it was amazing to me that I was able to consume stories, like I said, and entertainment and news in a way that I hadn't been able to synthesize it before. I'm not the big, I'm not the best reader. I'm not the biggest reader. It's hard for me to sit down and read. I really like moving around and being able to learn while I'm moving around. So that's why I listen to podcasts. I think people listen to podcasts. I think the, the operative word here is quote unquote intimate. 
people love to throw that word around, but you get to be listening to your your favorite host while you are laying down in bed. You know, they, 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 they're hanging out with you at all times of the day. People love to say that. So I, I do think that that's a big appeal for people. Um, I do think the word intimate is overused, but <laughs> it is definitely a reason that people like to listen. Amazing. So uh, who are your favorite podcasters? It changes all the time. So what are you listening to nowadays? So this morning I woke up and I listened to The Daily from The New York Times, which is interesting. I don't always listen to The Daily. I started listening to The Daily every single day when it came out in 2017 because it was right around the time that I put my first issue of Earbuds, the newsletter, out. And I was like, you know what? We're podcast buddies together. So I kind of felt a kinship with them and I was listening all the time. <laughs> and then there were more news podcasts that came out. They 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 really inspired a generation of news podcasts. So I fell into some of those. I wake up every morning and I listen to Up First from NPR. It's short. It's like 15 minutes about the news. I then listen to the Daily Zeitgeist, which is an hour long show about the news that I love. It's comedy yeah. and news and it's just great. And they have a really great community around their audience. Um, I then listen to Today Explained in the afternoon, which is a, a daily podcast, but in the afternoon from Vox. It's really, really great, really, really smart. Um, and then I have my, and I have a few more daily podcasts like um, um, from the Washington Post, Post Reports. Um, I listen to Hi History Daily, which is a podcast about like the opposite of news because it's about history, but it's great. It's daily <laughs> um, and it's really cinematic and beautiful. And I love history podcasts. And then I have my weekly podcast that when they drop, I listen to them. So Scam Goddess is a comedy show. I See Why Am I from Slate is In Case You Missed It. It's about internet culture. I listen to Sam Sanders' whole slate of podcasts, Vibe Check and Into It, uh, all about pop culture usually, but also about news and really, really smart, relevant stuff. I listen to If Books Could Kill, which is new-ish from Michael Hobbs, and he is just super smart, and it's all about books and how we're often swayed by these ideas within books, but sometimes the concepts within books are completely bullshit. <laughs> um, of course, I like everything to, in life. Yeah. Yeah. I listen yeah. to you're wrong about, which is a great show about sort of debunking these long held beliefs that we have in life. I listen to 99% invisible, which is about design in everyday life. I listen to American history tellers, which is about history. I listen to, I, I could go on forever. All the wiser is a really great show sort of about trauma and how we emerge from trauma better on the other side. Um, truly, if you need any recommendations, ask me anything. I, I, I didn't even name some that I really, really love. I just, I think I'm constantly listening to new ones and constantly having my mind blown by podcasts. So I'm so grateful for this Amazing. medium. <laughs> Amazing. You, you clearly are. I mean, you're totally into podcasts. So in a recent podcast, uh, you mentioned something which I found really interesting. You said that, you know, every co-working space should have you know a po podcast associated with it i mean what did you mean by that exactly and to add another layer what kind of businesses can start podcasts yeah i was working in los angeles at the time that i had this idea i was new to the podcast space i had just started a podcast recommendation newsletter that i mentioned before called earbuds and i was constantly having ideas because i was listening to podcasts about entrepreneurship i I then thought, you know, all these co-working spaces around Los Angeles, around the world have these amazing businesses in them. And these people who are excited, a lot of startups like to be um, renting space at co-working spaces. And a lot of those startups could benefit from having podcasts. So my, my idea was I wanted to be a podcast liaison for a co-working space, for all co-working spaces. I really, my hope was to like bounce around from space to space advising people on how to start podcasts. So I pitched the idea to a bunch of different co-working spaces and a few of them were interested, but I landed at one called Village Workspaces. And instead of being the podcast, I guess I was the podcast liaison, but I didn't take that job specifically. I became the studio manager. I helped them build a studio and then fill that studio with people who wanted to record their podcasts, both people who were already located within the co-working space and people outside of the co-working space. And the idea still stood, I think, that some businesses are prime candidates for sharing their stories or talking to their clients or talking to prospective clients by way of audio, sharing stories, and then maybe driving people to their business or building brand identity or whatever other goals they have. So 
a lot of businesses can benefit from having a show. I think now is a tough time. We're recording this in March of 2023. And in the U.S., at least, there seems to be slight economic yep. situations going on. <laughs> yep. uh, there's a lot of layoffs at tech companies. So now might not be the best time to start a show. Or you might say, <laughs> you know what? Podcasts are not that expensive. Let's do this rather than starting a, a YouTube series because then we don't have to pay for um, video and video editing. Yep. Instead, we can pay for podcast space and podcast editing, which is usually cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it might be time for your business to start a podcast. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think um, a lot of a lot of businesses can get the message right and use that message as long as it doesn't come off too corporate or come off too much like you are just trying to sell your own business. Yeah. It, there, are, there are ways to make it so that you're your CEO or maybe your chief marketing officer or maybe your community manager would be a really great host or maybe it's completely customer led and your customers want to tell stories. And yeah, I think, I think it can be a really great way to, um, to drive people to your yep, business. Totally. I mean, I asked this question because, you know, a lot of businesses start their podcasts, but they quickly run out of patience because, uh, there is, I mean, they say at least that there is no clear way of, you know, uh, finding out the ROI of yeah. a podcast, and let's say month on month basis, you have, you have to you know report the progress in terms of some numbers. So how should, you know, a brand measure the ROI of a podcast? Yeah, that is the, the problem. The toughest question yeah. is tracking, is attribution, is making sure that you are actually seeing a return. I think that the first thing to keep in mind is that you're, you might not see growth right away. And you sort of just need to be okay with that. I, I know it sucks. And I know it's really hard to hear. But you have to believe if you're hearing from some people who are listening to your show, there are probably other people who are listening to your show that you're not hearing from and that it is helping. Um, I think making it easy to hear from your listeners is really, really key. So setting up social channels um, or at least opening up your existing social channels so that people can let you know what they think making your calls to action on the show really clear that you want to hear from your audience, really, really important. And also early on creating a culture of collaboration between your show and other shows in your general topic area is a really big way to reach new audiences. And I think a lot of people forget the marketing aspect of podcasting when they start out because they really focus on content, which is very, very important, but you need to be doing 50% marketing and and it is okay to build marketing into every aspect of your podcast's creation right it does not make you a crazy capitalist it makes you smart yeah absolutely uh you know it brings me to this another thought like the difference between video podcast and audio podcasts first of all can we call a video interview a podcast and it, what is it, the difference yeah it's a great question um i have two thoughts on this one is a video podcast can be a podcast if somebody is consumed. So I, I sort of am split on this because I, I'm not somebody who's like the RSS feed is the only thing that makes it a podcast because I think that if my friends were to tell me, oh, Ariel, I listened to a podcast and they listened to an audiobook, I'm not going to be like, actually, it wasn't a podcast. I'm not yeah. going to do that because I'm not an asshole. But <laughs> technically, whatever, it's not a podcast. Um, but for videos, I mean, here's my thoughts. YouTube is making moves in the podcast space. YouTube will eventually be ingesting RSS feeds. It is possible soon that you can upload a video, mark it as a podcast, and those views will be downloads. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. Nobody really knows exactly how it's going to work. We will be finding out in the next few weeks, months. But a video can eventually be considered a podcast. I think the the word video podcast is sort of silly because... yeah. Because yeah. for me, uh, as I said before in this interview, I love listening for the sake of listening. And I do think that there is still beauty in listening for the sake of listening. And I think that there mm -hmm. are still hundreds of millions of people out there who want to listen to your podcast without seeing your face. And that is OK. So this all comes back to if you don't have the time, money, budget, resources, whatever, to record video and edit high quality video for your podcast, you don't have to do that. It is not something that you must do. It is something that you might want to consider if you're recording on Riverside or Squadcast or Zencaster, you can record video and then take clips of that and upload those to TikTok, YouTube reels, whatever, and then drive people to your show. You don't have to do a full on video translation of your audio podcast. Right. And I'm glad that you, you know, uh, brought this topic of uh, podcast might 
come to youtube one day uh, pretty soon uh because I, i was coming to the trends because you are you know really in touch with whatever is happening in the audio industry podcast industry so what are some other trends that you are you know you are predicting to see let's say into 2023 2024 what do you think is going to happen i think that more independent creators will be continuing to create podcasts no matter what no matter what economic downturns i think what is really interesting is that in the past few months in the us a lot of larger companies have definitely scaled back they have laid off a bunch of different people especially in media yep. and that means that some shows that might have been greenlit a few months ago are not going to be happening and that's really really sad and we're probably going to miss out on some really great audio hopefully it'll come back in a few months and we will get those stories again but some of those will will be lost um however i think that the independent creators will continue to independently create i have a podcast right now called trailer park the podcast trailer podcast and I will do that no matter what. <laughs> and yeah, I don't have a huge budget behind that. I don't have any budget behind that. I have some sponsors mm-hmm. that thankfully even in this this uncertain time have decided that they want to spend some money with me to get to my audience because they know that the audience is there. I have sponsors who are who reach independent creators. I have I'm working with Vocaster from Focus, right, which is an audio interface and independent creators need to have really great audio quality. I'm working with Osha, which is a podcast hosting company and they are really looking to reach new audiences um and they want to reach independent creators. I'm working with Capshow, which is an amazing company that does um AI copywriting, so you upload your file and then they they give you not only a transcript but also suggested blog posts, suggested show no. notes, suggested titles. It's really great. Uh I'm working with um Recast Studios, which is an audiogram maker that I really love, mm-hmm. and I'm also working with AugX Labs, which is an AI generative video creator. So I upload my file and it makes a video for me. So I'm working wow. with all of these companies that still no matter what want to reach independent creators. Amazing. We want to yeah. see more more of that, yeah. Yeah, and I think Absolutely. um Uh, to, to, uh, thank you for letting me go on my that rant about my sponsors. I'm very, very grateful for them. No, no, um, but independent creators are going to continue because they know that their message wants to needs to be heard, wants to be heard mm-hmm. by by their by their listeners. Um, so that's one of the trends that I'm seeing is that in, indie creators don't stop. Um, another trend that I'm seeing is that um, I think more and more people are going to experiment with subscriptions, and not everybody should be experimenting with subscriptions. So you're going to hear a lot from Apple and Spotify um try out our subscriptions you know it's a really great way to drive people and and make some money but um not every podcast has enough listeners that will convert to being paid subscribers so that's just something to keep in mind is i think that the larger platforms are going to push this but it's not right for everyone so your your show really right. needs to be big and you need to be hearing back from your listeners Mm-hmm. and hearing from them that they want to pay you extra money <laughs> right. in order to get more content so that that's really really important but I, i do think that more of the podcast listening apps will be introducing subscriptions listening apps but also places like supporting cast and patreon are going to get more and more friendly with listeners with sorry these supporting cast um patreon um supercast are going to get more and more friendly with podcast creators and even places like buzzsprout and red circle are introducing the idea of subscriptions the idea that you can pay your the people that you love to create podcasts to make those podcasts and um i think it is right for some people it is right for many people but right. it's not right for everyone and you should ask yourself and you should ask your listeners before you do anything amazing amazing my last couple of questions not exactly uh, two questions where are you in your journey with podcast uh, earbuds podcast collective sorry yeah earbuds is a weekly podcast recommendation newsletter that goes out every sunday night i've never missed a sunday night some eh, sometimes wow. i send it on sunday morning wow, okay. uh, sorry on monday morning because i am at a party on sunday night and you know what it's sunday in some parts of the world so that's okay with me and then that also has a weekly podcast that goes along with it and the podcast is a way for me to ex- to experiment with podcast technology and to meet people and to do cross promos and to experiment in general um the newsletter is awesome i will do it until the cows come home i love it so much and i just personally love it as a way to discover podcasts the way it works is that each week is curated by a different person anyone can curate a list i am not the person who curates every list i curate the curators but 
Okay. I make sure that each week is different. Each week is bringing new podcast recommendations. So you don't subscribe to the newsletter for one specific topic. There are a bunch of different newsletters. I, I subscribe to a few business-related podcast newsletters, and every week you get the best business-related podcasts. Mine is every week something new, and you don't know what's coming. So you need to be excited about the concept of podcasts in order to be subscribed to this newsletter. But my goal really is to just grow subscribers. I want 100,000 subscribers to this newsletter. There are that many, there are so many listeners in the world, people who love podcasts. So I want more people to subscribe to this newsletter. It's a lofty goal, but I think that it is achievable. Absolutely. We'll put a link to your newsletter in the description of this video. Thank you. And last ritual we make our guests go through anyone you'd like to nominate for our show. Have you spoken to Shreya Sharma? No, not yet. She's great. She writes a newsletter called Inside Podcasting, which is three times a week from inside.com. So it's inside.com slash podcasting. She's really smart. She shares news. She shares podcast recommendations. She shares, she shares trends. And then she also just started a new newsletter about her personal podcast recommendations. So I recommend her. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ariel, for your time, for giving us insights into this industry and most importantly, wonderful suggestions and creating podcasts yourself. We'll definitely, you know, uh, check out your work, support it in any ways possible. And yeah, and thanks to our guests for listening to this episode or watching this wherever you are consuming this content. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. And cut. That's it for today's episode, guys. If you really liked it, please subscribe to the Thousand Faces Club and press the bell icon below so that you don't miss any videos from us. Thank you.